I've got a very special guest. I've got Matthew Berry with Embark Media. Matthew helps course creators and coaches work more efficiently and save time with WordPress membership sites. All right. Hi, Matt. Welcome to the show. Hey, Susan. How you doing? Glad to be here. Yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm so glad that you're here and I am looking forward to dropping some amazing knowledge bombs with everybody because we know that you are the absolute man when it comes to membership sites. So um, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, you old. are. <laughs> <laughs> You've helped me get out of a huge bind. And so um, I look forward to sharing that in my experience with uh, working with you because I've been able to work with you personally on my membership site. So, um, all right. So we're going to get going. Can you tell everybody, let's start off by first saying, you know, why did you focus your online efforts in your business on membership sites? Because your expertise is much more than just membership sites. Well, that's a good question. So <clears throat> I graduated in information systems way back in the day and, you know, I was, and I was creating websites in notepad, you know, like literally <laughs> in windows on notepad back in the day. And then I started using Adobe Dreamweaver and then I started, you know, I stumbled upon WordPress, like it was pretty new, you know, yeah. bloggers were using like, uh, what was it like blogger.com? Yes, blogger yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I stumbled on WordPress and, and I have a friend that's a developer. I'm like, dude, have you seen WordPress? Is it, what's it like? He's like, I, I don't know. I don't really know. So I switched, <laughs> so I switched to WordPress like in the early two thousands and, um, uh, you know, I never went back from that. And so I was doing just WordPress site or excuse me, just websites and, I had somebody that came to me that needed some membership help. Actually, they had hired me on to do some marketing and then it ended up being, um, it's a whole other story, but, and then I, you know, I just kind of fell into that membership role, build the membership site. And I thought, man, this is pretty cool. I like this. And, you know, just got, it went from there. So I just totally switched. I mean, I still do some websites, but yeah, focusing on membership sites for sure. Absolutely. So why, why is it important to use WordPress for your membership sites versus, because, you know, we all know that there's Teachable and Thinkific and Podia and, you know, there's so many other ones besides those three. Why is it important though for people to actually use WordPress for the membership site? Good question. Well, uh, I mean, WordPress powers like 61% of the internet, something crazy like that. And most course creators and, and online coaches have a WordPress site okay. and you know, they've already got it. And this just helps you leverage what you already have. And going back to, you know, what I was talking about earlier, the opportunity that came up, these, this company, they had a, their membership site on a third party site and they were given an ultimate, the, the, the people they were with, the company they were with said, Hey, you know, we're switching to nonprofit only. You guys aren't nonprofit. You have, I think it was like 60 days to move off and then your account will be closed. Oh no. You know, and they were in like full panic mode, right? Oh. <laughs> Who wouldn't be in panic mode? I would be. <laughs> yeah. They're like, Oh crap, this is going to take us a year. It's never going to happen. So, and that's that whole project kind of moved me towards the membership site. So I got them over, we put it up, you know, it was done a minimum viable product kind of deal done in like 30 days. And then after that, we went through and customized the whole thing with in WordPress. So, you know, it just kind of depends on where you're at, but for me, it makes sense to go with WordPress. I like to have more control over what I do and try to reduce as much limitations as possible. You know, when I saw the bad experience they had with a third party where <laughs> I basically right. had to move. So yeah, that's, that's, that's why I think it's important. I like, and you know, there's so much integration with WordPress now, what you can do with it. Um, and you've already got it. You're probably paying for hosting. Right. Add on, add on to that. So save, right. saving the fees and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Now, what is the major pro of using WordPress for your membership site? Like what's the, what's the biggest, if you could say it in like one word or one sentence, what is the biggest pro for anyone who is like, hmm, maybe this is the way to go. Scalability, I think. Scalability. Yeah. So you can start if you only have one product and you can have thousands of products on the membership course site then? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, you can. I, well, at some point, 
people using a third party platform will feel some kind of a pain point with it. That said, there's still lots of people that use a third party and they're happy and that's great. But if you are using a third party and you feel uh, some kind of a pain point that's causing you to question, where do I go? What do I do? WordPress is the answer. Right. Because we know from my own experience, I was on a third party. And for me, I wasn't able to customize it the way I wanted to do it. And so we had to, you know, I was like, Matt, <laughs> like, what am I going to do? I'm like, I need to not do this. I had a WordPress site. Um, I mean, obviously I had other issues going on with my WordPress, but um, this was just the best option for me. And I have found it to be absolutely amazing. And um, I'm so thankful and so happy that I did that. And I'm so appreciative of the fact that you were there to help me through that and get me through all of those. Cause they're, they came with a lot of pain points too. Let me tell you, yeah. because I had, to, I had to learn something that wasn't, um, I wasn't used to, I mean, I was used to WordPress, but I wasn't used to that. And so my, my brain had a shift. Do you know yeah, what I mean? For sure. Um, and you so, picked it, you picked it up pretty quick. I mean, you did all, you just were like, Hey, how do I do this? And then I would show you and you're like, Oh yeah. Okay. And yeah. you would go and do it. So. Welcome to the pandemic. I mean, right? right. What a better thing to do than to learn how to do <laughs> membership sites in WordPress because I I'm trapped in my house. <laughs> Cuz I had avoided it for so long. I yeah. I in my biggest thing, my biggest pain point and the reason why I did this, not only because my third party was just a pain in my rear, it does not give me what I wanted it to do, but also because I put my trust in other people to do my site and to do this and to do that. And they just didn't deliver on it. And so I was very, very thankful. I mean, I think that's very important is you have to find someone that you trust and you have to like make sure that they're going to handle you no matter your size of business. I mean, obviously I'm not a bazillionaire and I'm not a, you know, a huge corporation. I'm just a little person as well, but you treated me like I was that big person out there making sure that I had this professional site and that it was, it was done correctly this time. Absolutely. Without a doubt, it was done correctly. So well, that's nice of you to say. Yeah, no, yeah. it's true though. It's true. I, I don't, I mean, don't you agree? You're in business, you're online that you have to find people that you trust and people that, that know what they're doing, not just say they can do it, but actually know what they're doing. Yeah. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of people out there that say they can and they can't. And that comes up over and over and over again. And it's such a pain in the neck because it gives, you know, right. It just, it paints a lot of people in bad light. So it, right. yeah, tr find someone that you can trust can be hard for sure. Yeah, it can be. So how can someone expertly position themselves for success with a membership site? <sighs> Wow. How can they, um, sorry, I told you, these, I told you these were going to be hard questions. And then I threw this <laughs> I, you know, I have to throw you off your game once in a while, Matt. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think that, uh, you can position yourself. I think it will be, you know, because you can customize it. Like you said, you were kind of frustrated with the customization that you were, you were fighting with a third party. With WordPress, you were able to pull your full brand into it and make it look the way that you wanted to fit your brand. And that can build trust with people because it doesn't have a lot of, you know, you're not going to some other site to go to it. They're just going to your site, you know, that which can help build trust, I think. Right. Because I think that's, that's an important part, Matt, is that like, if you go and you want to look at, say, my courses, it it just goes to another page, but you don't realize you're actually on another site. You're actually on a whole other area of my site, like with WordPress, you know what I mean? And so right. that was probably my biggest thing is to realize that, oh yeah, I'm on another page, but really it's another extension. It's like another arm of my business. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it was so seamless and, and the branding was so seamless. Oh, I was so excited. It wasn't like, when I was with somebody else, it kind of was branded, but not really branded. If yeah. You know. You've got your colors and your logo and that's about it. Yeah, exactly. And that was a huge issue. And so, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I find it good, but, um, so, you know, what's the most critical aspect of a membership site course creators fail to include? I mean, mm. what do you see? What's the most critical aspect that 
course creators. You can use me as an example, just fail to include. Well, wow, what they fail to include. I, I think maybe I'm going to twist this question into something that I want no, more. Go ahead. But, but I think that, especially with WordPress, what people can become frustrated with is if they're with an inferior host, if they're using a hosting company that isn't up to snuff, because a membership site is a completely different beast than a normal website where a normal website, someone may come and visit it and stay for 30 seconds or five minutes. And with a membership site, you might have hundreds of people coming and staying for hours and you just got to have a robust foundation to build off of. And, you know, not everyone goes that way. They start off with, well, you know, this hosting is only $35 a year, man. That's awesome. And then, you know, they're going to run into issues. So I think, I think starting off on a great foundation and building that foundation is going to uh, allow you to scale. One person uh, in a mastermind I'm in, she said, build your, build your website, build your membership site, build your company where you want it to be. Don't build it where you are you know, so you that it's ready for you when you can scale in case, you know, you're scaling quickly, whatever happens so that it's available uh, for that traffic and, right. And, you know, to, to be where you want to be, not necessarily where you are right now. So can you on a word, is it important? Okay. Let's just ask this. Is it important on a membership site to worry about SEO and or Google finding you, or is it not as important as, because it is WordPress and WordPress mm -hmm. is so robust with SEO, Google ranking and all that. Is it as important when you are, you know, building, designing and doing your membership site? Is that an important factor or no? It depends on how much of your membership site is visible to someone that doesn't have an account or isn't logged in. Okay. So, so, you know, if it's, if it's gated with some restrictions on who can view it, it's not that important. Right. Um, so could you increase Matt? So could you increase your ranking though? If, if on there, like I have a free section, it has a whole bunch of free information that they can download available to anybody without an account. Would that help? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Like if they, if they didn't have to log in, Mm -hmm. um, for, for the free stuff, if, if it was just available, absolutely. You could SEO the heck out of that. Uh, and that's, you know, it's just going to help your membership site for sure. Okay. So, so it's recommended. I mean, it's important, but not as important as your WordPress site. Yeah. You know, you can do all your marketing on your other site and like you, you've got your courses on a subdomain of your main domain. Uh, but yeah, if you've got, just like you said, you, you could SEO the heck out of the free stuff. That's only going to, you know, make it easier for people to find you and consume your content and hopefully become a paying customer member. So when it comes to paying customers, how do they pay? Do they have to get now something else? Like, do they need to get WooCommerce? Do they need to get Thrivecart? Do they need to get some other integration to be able to pay then? Or how does that all work? It's most um, membership platforms or learning management systems have that baked in. Okay. So you don't necessarily have to do it. It depends on the complexity of your system. So, uh, you know, I've built them with where it's just, for instance, um, with LearnDash. Yep. I example. have LearnDash. Yep. Okay. So you can look, you can just, you, you can have, you can have people pay and create a membership site or just courses with LearnDash. They can pay through LearnDash or you can add WooCommerce, uh, you know, to add another, you know, other levels or Thrivecart. I like Thrivecart just because, cool. yeah, just because you can, you know, you can do your order bumps and you can do your one-time offers and all that kind of stuff for sales funnels. So, you know, there's not a one size fits all. What but, about Shopify? Do you put Shopify then or no? Is that a whole different beast? Yeah, that's a whole different beast. Okay. You know, it, you probably could incorporate it if you wanted to, but it's going to take a, f you know, you're going to have to, duct tape it together a little bit to, to make it work. So, so just, just in case anybody asks, so you can't have a membership site and a Shopify account work and play nice together. Basically it's one or the other. Cause they're two different beasts. Correct. I think it would be difficult. I've never done it. 
Okay. But I mean, I'm sure that there are some ways that you can integrate them together. It just would become a little bit complicated. Okay, fair enough. Because I know some people use Shopify for stuff. I don't know. I don't use Shopify, but people use Shopify. And so that that's a question, you know, hey, like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm sure that there's what yeah, I'm sure that there's ways to do it where you could integrate your automation system or your CRM and you know Zapier, all that kind of stuff, and you could probably make it work. It would just be a little more complicated. Okay. Hey, you know me. Maybe in the back of my mind somewhere I'm thinking that I want to do that. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to do that. You it, you can breathe now. I'm not asking you to do something crazy again. <laughs> I won't have a thousand boxers from Susan, how do I do the Shopify site? Yeah, no, I am not on Shopify. Um, uh. <laughs> you know, Matt, so why do you, we know that membership sites fail? They fail. So in your opinion, why do they fail? What's the, what's the, like, what's the top three reasons why most membership sites fail? I would say that they're number, probably number one is they stop offering value. Okay. Um, maybe number two would be creating a community that people want to be a part of no matter what. Um, maybe number three is, I guess tied to number one, just the content isn't that good or it dries up. And I've, I've been in some where people, the, the owner of it, they're just kind of flaky and you might post a question you might ask something and it might not get answered for a week. So, you know, you've got to be engaged with your members. Right. Or I, I think what I've seen, cause you know, we've both taken a ton of courses and you know, I, I've hmm. been in some that it says updated and you're looking at this stuff and you're like, wait, this is from 2014 yeah. and this is 2020. Like how is this updated? And then like you said, you re you reach out to them and ask them questions and they're, and they don't answer for the longest time. And then you're like, okay. And then when they finally do, they're like, what's the problem? Well, this information is from so far along. Like I thought it's updated. You literally said it's updated and it's not. Yeah. And I think some, I'll get clients that, you know, they're just, they're just, Oh man, I'm so ready to just be hands off. I just want a membership site and it can just earn me money. And you know, I can, be Tim Ferriss and drink margaritas on the beach and <laughs> <laughs> doesn't work that way. Right. Right. Cause I think a lot of times too, Matt, like, you know, this, I, I think people forget that a lot of those course creators that are big. Okay. Like I started out with Jeff Walker back in the day. That was the first mm -hmm. course I probably ever took with Jeff Walker, Evan Pagan and stuff is that they now have large teams. And so they have teams that can constantly update that information and they can do passive income and stuff and they are in their business, but not probably as much as those just starting out. And I think people often forget that and they see, well, they want that. Well, you can't just have that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's going to take a long time to get to that point and mm -hmm. you have to be consistent. You have to put in sweat equity. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. It's not easy. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. So it's hard work. Oh, it is a lot of hard work. I mean, we were talking right before we started and I said, you know, I have this membership site and it was supposed to launch and I have put it off for another week or two because I, I got so, I guess, burned out with it that I wanted mm -hmm. it to be the best I could put out there. And unfortunately, um, it just, I, I needed to move on with something else and I need to get back to it because people are waiting. I mean, I have people yeah. waiting for it, but it is a lot of work. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of work. It is a don't, lot. Of work. Don't start a membership site that you want to succeed unless you're willing to work. Exactly. Exactly. Cause it's a lot of work. And I've been at mine for a long time cause I had it on a different site. And then when I moved it over, we got it over quickly, but it, needed to be updated and I needed to do this and I needed to do that. And it, it's a lot of work. I mean, mm -hmm. even though I already had it on another one and it was success over there when I moved it over, I had to update it. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's been a lot of work, but what do you think? Um, three things, any WordPress site needs to be successful. Like, like what are the three top things a WordPress site needs to just be successful? Okay, so we talked about it a little bit before. Hosting, number one, you need a really good uh, managed 
WordPress managed dedicated host, a dedicated WordPress. <laughs> However you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we know, yeah, we know. <laughs> That's number one. That's number one. Uh, number two, uh, you want to, you know, if you're already using a CRM, you want to find something that's going to integrate with that unless you're willing to change. Uh, because, like what? Like, uh, I mean, whether you're an affiliate of them or not, but who would you, like, what would you say? Like, give an example. Okay, well, so for you, for example, you are using, I think, ConvertKit, right? Mm -hmm. So the, you know, rather than switch you from ConvertKit, we went with MemberPress mm -hmm. to connect with that because they have an integration with them. Yep. You know, if, it if you would have had something else, if you say you had ActiveCampaign or Infusionsoft, I would say Memberium uh, for your memberships uh, plugin. So, okay. you know, that you, you, you want to, unless you want to start from, from scratch, it's, you know, integrate what you're already using and look for the top tools that are going to integrate with that so that you, you know, it's just going to save you time. Right. Uh, number three, can there only be number two? <laughs> oh, number three. There can be two. You don't have to give me three. <laughs> but, but for me, like, I just know that, you know, that was one of the biggest thing. Make sure that my host, was able to handle it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we had to make sure that my host was able to handle it. I, I think number three would be, I know that when I'm building a membership site, I build the backbone of the whole system before even starting on the content. Okay. So you've got, you've got to think about, you know, your admin page, you've got to think about change password, um, change your credit card, um, update your password, all those kind of admin pages. Right. That can that can get overlooked, and a lot of times people will be like, "Ooh, well, you know, I've got." It's easy to get distracted, right? Like, I've got this new tool. All right, oh, how pretty can I make it look? Well, let's start with the other stuff first, <laughs> because you, <laughs> she's raising. Yeah, you got to start with that other stuff first, and make sure that you've got a good system in place to build it. I like pretty things, Matt. Sorry. Like, <laughs> hey, I, I have to look pretty. <laughs> I've fallen prey to that too. I'm like, ah, I've done this before. I'm going to start with the design. No, bad idea. Yeah, I know. And it's hard, but that's why like you need someone like you in your back pocket who you can call upon um, at all hours, even if it's, sorry, he, probably he, I shouldn't say this because he probably doesn't allow this for everybody, but me, he just kind of ignores, but who sends, you know, 18 messages. But by the time I get to message 19, I've already answered my question yeah. 17. So I just say, oh, ignore the first 17. That's so true. <laughs> That's so true. Because I think for me, like, I don't know, people might be like this, but for me, Matt, I have to, like, when I write it down, it's how I write to and create content. When I write it down, I can then like see it and I understand it better. But when I'm just mm -hmm. sitting there trying to think, and I'm telling you, WordPress sites and membership sites, it takes a little bit of a learning curve. And it's, you know, I have sure. to really think about it that my brain just, when I do these, I have to do like a map basically. And so I feel like when I send it to you, then I can find it because there's just not a lot of, you like have to watch a lot of YouTube videos and piece it mm -hmm. together and do whatever. And so I guess, that kind of leads me to my next question, Matt. Are you going to create a course yourself mm. or a membership site that will help people build membership sites and build courses or no? Yeah, that's actually, I finished a course on the 29th of October. So it's out there and it's just a super basic overview of uh, using WordPress and LearnDash to build the simple membership site. Yeah, so I do have that. And then I'm working on some other, you know, more in-depth kind of stuff. But yes, I do. It's out there. So even if you're, so even if you're, you got the in, you can box Matt, he still doesn't tell you he does things like this. I'm just putting <laughs> that out there. So I just wanted people to hear that, that, you know, I've got the in and nobody told me. Even it's brand new. I haven't put it out. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I haven't really marketed it at all. Even even when I said, "Hey, hey, Matt, give me all your profiles. Give me all your stuff that you're doing. Any courses, content, nothing, nothing. I got nothing." <laughs> I, I I tend to be very um, 
it's funny i was get i was consulting a guy on building his stuff and he said um your messages are a little trite could you give me some more uh you know more depth and yeah i, I suffer from that for sure yeah i know but but here's here's the thing that you do suffer from it but at the same time you're just so we have a mutual friend we have a mutual friend and we we've talked extensively about you and so when she listens to this she'll be like oh yeah um you're just you put so much value out there and you are so concerned about helping other people and watching them succeed that you fail to talk about yourself and all the amazing stuff that you can do and the stuff that you've created um and and maybe it's because you know we're a little bit older and that we just we're in that part of our life where we just really want to watch and see people succeed. But, um, yeah. you know, our mutual friend, we've talked about her and mm -hmm. I have, have spoken about you and that, you know, you're an incredible person and you just, you know, your stuff, but you don't talk enough about the stuff that you do. And so I will make sure that I get, if, if it's available to get that link. So that way I can oh, yeah. get that, um, out there available for people. Um, Absolutely. So that we, they can see it because, you know, this goes on YouTube and it goes on my podcast and it's on my blog page. So I want people to be able to, that's kind of my way of giving it back to you because um, you have been absolutely like a godsend to mine. So um, I'm very, Well, very thank you. Thank you, Susan. Yes, yeah. I do suffer from that for sure. <laughs> you, yes, do. you do. Now that you're read enough and that I've embarrassed you enough, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have, I just have a couple more questions and then I'll let you go. Um, in your opinion, do you think that there are too many course creators and membership sites currently, or do you see the trend just exploding more with, um, you know, with the COVID, the pandemic, 2021 coming? Oh my gosh. I don't, yeah, I think it's just going to explode. You know, <clears throat> we were I was talking about this in another group. It's like snow days for school. There's no excuse now. Nope. You can just learn from home on the snow day, right? Which the teachers are probably going to be like, crap. I really, <laughs> I really like snow days. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think, I think they preferred the snow days probably more than kids, you know? Right, right. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think it's going to slow down at all. I think it's going to just go bonkers. What are the, what are the niche, niche, niches? I hate that word, but what are the niches mm -hmm. that you find um, first are exploding or second are not served so they're very underserved that you would love to see more of wow that's a great question oh man there it, it seems like there's no end to the niches that are out there like, like um one of my friends she has a belly dance course and you know she's crushing it like yeah. a belly a belly dance course right <laughs> you know who i'm talking about yes i do i know her yeah, she's crushing it. It was a belly dance course. I know. Like how how niche can you get? Um, so <laughs> where it's underserved, that's a really good question. Oh man. I, belly dancing I, is underserved. <laughs> yeah, belly dancing is underserved. <laughs> I wow, that is just such a great question. I think, gosh, I feel I I kind of feel like public education. Mm -hmm. Um and even even higher education like college my daughter uh she's a, like a junior in college she's she didn't go back this semester just because the online was not that great and so you know public education higher education things like that i i think there's a need for improvement right. in though in that space uh for online uh so is it so would this be a good thing or and you probably don't know this and i don't know this but do you think maybe the reason why it's lacking is because professors sign a contract that they can't offer courses online away from the university? Oh. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I didn't, I didn't know that that was a thing, but that could be. But I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering if that's the reason why there's not more higher level education because you have, you know what I mean? Because all these yeah. professors maybe? I don't know. I think you know, there's probably a learning curve with them too, that, you know, got sprung on them. Okay. It's COVID. You've got to do your online stuff, you know, where these universities and such they had, and even high schools and middle schools and stuff, they have online learning, but this just kind of brought it to the forefront and perhaps they'll get better and improve, which I think 
will they will do they'll need or people that will now just be like heck i'm you know why am i going to send them to the public school i can have them go to this other online school that's much better that offers much more they're already going to be at home so you know or whatever whatever happens right you know it might it might make that that market stronger uh and and create more uh you know more demand for it right no absolutely i was just curious if you've seen you know what your opinion of the niches that you know are underserved in in you know yeah i <laughs> they're probably everyone probably every niche <laughs> seriously just because they're even if you're thinking of creating a course or a membership and there's already, it's already going to be out there. Right. You can learn, you can learn everything just like you were talking about right. on YouTube. It's just in the matter of the, the kind of value that you offer with it and, and how you present it mm -hmm. and make it quicker for people to have a shortcut to get to their outcome quicker. Right. No, absolutely. I, I agree because um, not, everyone is for everyone. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I could go out and I, I mean, I could go out and start teaching belly dancing. Well, I'm sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> ain't nobody want to watch me belly dance, but <laughs> I could, you know what I mean? And it's, it's a matter right. of, you have to find that person because think about all the courses that you and I have taken. I've taken podcasts. I've taken YouTube. I've taken all sorts of courses out there. And, um, when I take them, I'd be like, "Ugh, I, I can't do this. I can't handle the voice. I can't handle the content. It's too simplified. It's whatever the reason. So then you move on to somebody else. And then finally you find somebody. It's kind of like, it's kind of like masterminds. Masterminds are not for every single person. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes when you get into the mastermind, you just find out that that's just not your people. Those are just, that just isn't right for you. It's not that that person is bad. It's not that the people in there are bad. It's just that it just wasn't for you. And yeah. so I absolutely agree that, you know, if you want to go out and create a belly dancing course, just because there's one out there already crushing, it doesn't mean that there can't be a hundred more. Cause there's like yeah. 20,000 billion people in the world that, yep. you know, the market's exactly, there. exactly, exactly. You know, I think it's, I think you're right. I think it's about how, how you present it and, and what you do and, and, you know, you'll find your people. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing. So, all right, Matt, what would you like to leave with and how could people, can, can anybody work with you? Can they be little, little potatoes like me or do they have to be big, uh, you know, big companies to work with you? No, no. Uh, I would say, uh, an, you know, someone with an established business that's got a good business plan and they've, you know, cause I'm not necessarily, uh, inexpensive. So if you're, you know, if you're established, great. And you're, you know, you're ready to move on. You don't have a membership site or you do have one that you're feeling some pain points with, you know, reach out to me. Happy to talk. Even if, even if you don't have the funds right now for a membership site, you can always still reach out to me and I'll answer your questions and give you some advice and tips and stuff like that. So I do have uh, a membership site builder, private group, on Facebook and it's called membership site builders. So you're, you know, you're welcome to join that. It's free. I try to give some tips on there. Um, I'm going to start improving my content. I'm not a content machine like Susan here. So I've got plans to improve that membership, that uh, Facebook group, but, and then I also do have the free course um, that you can sign up at crew.embark.media. And if you want to take that free course, it's there. Uh, oh, so it's free. That's free. Oh, yep. I didn't even understand it was free. Sorry, I missed that whole point. That's <laughs> free. Wow. It, it's okay. it's free. It's a basic overview, and it does deal specifically with WordPress and Learn Dash, and it is free. Okay. I, am I like your student in there? Like, did you take a lot of our conversations and a lot of our <laughs> videos and everything, and be like, "This is what you not to do. <laughs> not what you do. That's no, right. no, not this." <laughs> You know, hey, I know course creators that do that. Hey, like I get it. They they block out the person's name, maybe their face, and they put this is what you don't do. <laughs> you you are not featured in the course. Darn you're it. Okay. You're okay. <laughs> no, I tried. 
So, okay, perfect, perfect, Matt. So I just wanted to throw that out there just to make sure that if anybody wants to get a hold of you or they have questions, um, you know, they can, they can do that. And one last thing, because I know we got just a couple minutes. Um, I try to keep these really short and sweet, but hey, I, I, I talk too much when I'm on, on with Matt. So um, my question is, before I get off, do you also offer, what if, what if I, do you specifically just work with membership sites now, or what if I'm having issues with my website? What if I'm having problems, you know, the speed, the, the, the images of whatever, do you also work with people that way anymore? Or, or are you away from that? No, I, yeah, I do that. That's right. Yeah. I do offer speed and performance and also maintenance plans for, for WordPress sites. So absolutely. And man, I just read a really cool article today about improving uh, uh, WordPress sites with Cloudflare, if anybody's familiar with that. Yeah. So it's, I don't want to get too techy, but there's a super cool way now that Cloudflare is implemented. So yeah, I do. I do offer those and I kind of geek out on speed and performance. Yeah, so sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do. Yes, you do. You're like, Susan, get this. Okay. Susan, <laughs> Okay. Matt says, yep. do it. I do it. You know, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not a WordPress genius by any means, but I just, Hey, I just listen to you when you say do something, oh, do it, you know, you've done awesome. You, you just, <laughs> you just like a dough right in and kick some butt. I tried. I mean, we, we still had a couple, you know, a couple issues. Cause the problem is, is you're now blocked on Voxer. I'm sorry. <laughs> no wonder <laughs> I haven't got a message in weeks. Dang it. No. <laughs> but really Matt, like, you know, it's just amazing because the problem was is I had a customized site and then, you know, it's went through changes and it went through this and it went through that and all this stuff. And, and the problem is, is that people just give you all this crap that you don't need and do all this stuff to your site. And you really don't know about it because you're like hands off and you give it to someone. Yeah. Educate yourself even on the basics of it, which I think is why your free course that you just told me about is awesome, is that it just gives you a little understanding so that way you're not hiring someone or going to someone in the dark and being like, Oh, cause I mean, I was like a deer in headlights and I felt really, really incredibly ridiculous and, and silly for the things that had happened to my website because I didn't educate myself because I, I just thought I was giving it to people who technically knew what they were doing and right. didn't. Well, and you don't have time, right? You're looking for some help. Someone's going to save you some time so you can work on right. the other stuff that you're really good at. Right. Right. I'm, I'm good at content. I love creating stuff. I love, right. I love writing. I love doing all that. I don't like the techie stuff of WordPress sites. I don't like the techie stuff of the membership site. I don't like all that techie, sorry, crap. I just don't. It just, it gives me a headache, but when I can like actually write stuff in whatever, like that fuels me. And so, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So here's, here's one last, qu last question, Matt. What, what is on your hat and why is that important? Ooh, very good question. Kinsta, okay, that's my favorite hosting company. Uh, Kinsta has like just the bomber uh, managed WordPress sites. So I'm all in on Kinsta. I think they saw some posts I made on Instagram and they sent me a free hat. So I'm like- They did? Yeah. That's how you got that, okay. Yeah. I, I've, so, never, I've never asked you how you got the hat, but I know you've had it several times so yeah perfect i am not an affiliate of kinsta i i believe matt's a, an affiliate of kinsta and i'll link his code down there so oh, he, awesome. will have, he will have to send that to me so i will add that to uh the blog i'll add it to youtube i'll put it on my podcast so if you send me that matt i will also link that because i am not an affiliate of kinsta um but you are so hopefully we can get some people you know joining you through kinsta yeah do it it's awesome. Okay, perfect. All right, Matt, I am going to sign off for now on the podcast and the broadcast, but um, I thank you so much for coming and I appreciate you coming in and dropping truth bombs and sharing information that you've kept secret from me for so long um, <laughs> about this free course. I'm a little bitter about it actually. Um, so, I mean, I, I am bitter about it. Like I have to keep you in the dark a little bit, Susan. <laughs> okay, well, the Voxer messages are going to explode now. So I've warned you. 
Oh, and I might start belly dancing. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm not going to start belly dancing. We're going to leave that to our friend because she's the expert. I am not. I don't want to be. So anyways, all right, Matt, I appreciate you coming on and um, yeah, take care. Thanks, Susan.